Hey everyone, welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can use UV Sim to create a DDoS attack. And uh, this is just a kind of a reference that I got one of the comment to explain how it is possible and how we can do so. So first, let me explain you with help of a diagram how it is possible and what is the scenario that we can implement to perform this DDoS attack. So suppose in case of our installation, we have, I'm using because I didn't have much of time to set up the uh, two VM setup. So in this case, I'm using only single VM and the limitation with single VM is that we will not be able to use ping for the data traffic, but I'm going to explain how we can implement this scenario. Now this is just a open 5GS core network, right? In the core network, we have two components. Basically, if we think of the related functionality, one is the control plane and the second one is the user plane, right? So the user plane is the part which handles the user data or the UE traffic. In case of any core network, if any attacker wants to disrupt it, to disrupt this core network, there are two ways to do so. First is he can disrupt the control plane by kind of a packet storm so that the signal processing taken care by the network is choked and it's not able to carry out any more signal processing. The second one is choking the user plane. But for this, it needs to be first authenticated with the network. This is the disruption of Control plane and the second one is disruption of the user plane. Now keep in mind with disruption of the control plane there are multiple functions in 5G network and an attacker can try to take out any one of it but in this example I will show you how we can create a signal storm we call it a signaling storm so the second part would be if you are authenticated then you can use the same UE to have multiple connection using UE Ransom if you know all the details of that UE and try out multiple streams of data for example you have this MC and you know all these values you can use UE Ransom configure it with all these values and then what you can do you have the same, you are authenticated with the core network. All right, that's good. The second part would be what you would do, you will just send large streams of data here on the user plane to disrupt it with the same SIP. And once you are authenticated, your signaling is very less. You are allowed to do anything in the network with this, this SIM, you would be able to have n number of, uh, you can say instances running with UV and SIM, which can disrupt the user plane. So in this example, I'm going to show you this disruption of the control plane and how it is easily possible. I just defined 10 SIMs here. If you want, you can define more. All right, so I'm, so I'm in my installation and I have a single VM setup. So I will just start my G node B. So I have only one G node B here defined. And as soon as I started, you can see it is trying to establish SRTB connection. SRTB is up. It's able to con contact the AMF. So NG setup is okay. In the second session, I will try to connect one UE. And you can see everything is going good. Our UE signaling is up. I will not be able to ping any IP through this interface because I'm using a single VM setup. In case you want to use Open 5GS and UE Ransom to communicate with the internet, you need to use a multi VM setup now so far so good in here what I can do is I can I will just connect two more sessions so one is tail hyphen f for log amf open 5gs amf log so I will see what are the logs going on in the amf in this session and I'll just do vagrant ssh and here let me just do an H. 
So I will check the status of my memory usage. I will just close this connection and what I will do. So in UE Ransom, so let me just clear it. So in UE Ransom, there is an option hyphen N where you can spin up multiple number of MCs and it will just replace the MCs in serially. So for example, if you have defined MC1 here, so if I show you the configuration here, I have MC1, MC2 and so on till 10. So I have around 10 MC here. So if I just pass this parameter hyphen and 10, it will start those 10 MCs. So you can see 10 MCs are connected and all of them are successful. Memory usage is not that uh, I would say increased. So I'll just power off this machine. And what I will do inside my VM, I will just reduce the memory to one GB and CPU would be one so that I can show you what is the limitation of the, the system once it is, once it has a reduced capability. All right, now you can see in the edge top, I have around 50% of memory already used and 0.7% of or 1.3% of the CPU. Now my G node B is up and I'm going to start around 100 UEs now. And let's see, only 10 would be able to connect, but let's see what would be the impact. So if you see here, it has increased a shot up to around 80%, but then suddenly it decreased because none of these UE were able to connect. I can form a loop where I can ask it to keep on connecting again and again, and then it will try to break. So let me just create a loop here. So I'll go to my one more session here, go to config and I will create a loop.sh and this is a shell script. So I'll just type bin bash for i in 1, 10. So it will run for 10 times. Do. And I will run. What was my command here? Just run the same command. And what I will do, I will just give it the executable access, clear the screen and let's break my VM. So you can see here, it's shot up to 94%. Again, reduced to 1.4%. This can create a signal storm here. See, my E node B actually died up and There's a lot of failure and let us check what is the status of Okay, AMF is running but the gene would be died up. Okay, it's, it's going on. So as you can see, my U is still able to connect because the resources are not tied up again. So I'll just close this, enter the script again. So my U is connected and I'm going to spin up around 400 UEs. Let's see what happens, okay. 40% and then it has shot up to 100% CPU usage and all right I have my GNB again died and my UE got disconnected so as you can see this is kind of a DDoS attack where the issue is that 
my G node be in the same, same VM. So rather than taking out the AMF, it's just breaking down the G node B. But in the same way, this can be used to disrupt AMF or UPF or PFCP, depending upon what type of system it is targeting. So keep in mind whenever you are developing a network which is exposed to such such sort of DDoS attack, you need to have DDoS mitigation capabilities in place as well. I hope this was relevant to what you guys were looking for. And in case you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.